Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Classic Coco, with Let's Be Real, the podcast. And I'm here at Exchange Miami with DJ Showtime. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. We chilling. You know, it's a Friday night. So, you're, you know, DJ Showtime, he about to do his thing. But let everybody know who you are, where you from, and everything like that. Uh, my IG's party with Showtime. I go by Showtime, the DJ, DJ Showtime. Any variant of Showtime, it's your boy. Uh, I rock out every Friday, Saturday, and Monday here at Exchange on South Beach. Uh, so if you're ever in Miami, you feel me, hit your boy up. Let's party. Let's get right. All right, y'all. Pull up. Y'all, okay, so I met DJ Showtime in April when I came to Miami, and the vibe was lit. I believe that was like the Bernice Burgos party, and yeah. you DJed, and the vibe was lit. His energy was lit. You know, he did his thing. Opened up the club. So, yeah, what actually made you start DJing? What brought you into that life? Uh, bad DJs. You know, I used <laughs> to go to parties. I was a promoter since I was 21 when I went to FAMU. Shout out my Rattlers in the building. Okay. Um, I threw a lot of parties. And one of the most important things about my party was having the right DJ. And it's just... Only a few. There's many DJs, but only a few are like the right DJs. And most of those DJs are booked. So one night we had a party coming up and I couldn't find a DJ that I was like satisfied with. So I was like, you know, forget it. I'm a DJ. And just so happens that I fell in love with it. And not only that, I was really good at it. So from now on out, I was just like, I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to pay myself twice. Okay, period. Okay, so when you first started DJing, how was your first party? Was it was it wag? Did you feel like the club, the crowd was rocking with you? Like how was it? It, it wasn't even at a club. It was a sports bar. Um, oh. If you ever been to Tallahassee, Florida, it was AJ Sports Bar on Tennessee Street. Uh, second floor, we had rented it out. It's probably like sixty people in the building, but the vibe was just on point. It was so genuine, you know. Yeah. So from there on out. Yeah, I was infatuated with it. Right. That's dope. That's dope. Okay, okay. So what has been your number one struggle, you feel like, being a DJ? And especially, well, actually, I don't even think we said where are you originally from? Well, I'm originally from Boston. Okay. Uh, I moved to Florida when I was about 12. Okay. And went to school in Palm Beach County. And then I went to Florida A&M University. And then from there... I came to South Beach and uh, became the person you see today. Okay, yes. Listen, you you made a path for yourself. So, what was I saying? Okay, so what do you feel like has been your biggest struggle, you know, as far as being a DJ coming from Boston and then growing up in Florida, going to school in Florida? What has been your biggest struggle kind of maneuvering? Me just not being thirsty, you know, like... <laughs> Being a DJ, Wait, you're saying DJs are thirsty. Yeah, it's very competitive. Okay, so you gotta like okay. reach out to promoters, club owners. You know what I'm saying? Me, that's just not me. It's either you rock with me or you don't, and that's why I'm at Exchange Miami because they rock with me and I rock with them. It's a mutual respect, you know. So this is the only place you'll ever see me DJing as of right now. Right. You know, exclusive. Oh, he stamped that. So <laughs> listen, you what uh, you said? Fridays, Saturdays, and what? Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Friday, Saturdays, and Mondays. Make sure you tap in to Exchange Miami. What? Because this was actually the first club I came to when I came to Miami. So he definitely put me on. And y'all, when I tell you they had a woman with a little, the fire twister. Oh, they turned the fuck up. So yeah, you never know what you're going to experience on South Beach, you know? Right. So just come ready to twerk and have a good time. Right, right. Okay, so what advice would you give aspiring DJs? Be yourself. Play music that you like. And don't just follow the hype. You know, and... No, nah, I'm going to keep it at that. That's the most important. Oh, I thought I feel like you was going to talk your shit. You I was. I was. I don't want to get too listen, much out, though. You know what I mean? Y'all, like, let him know it's Let's Be Real, so he better pop his motherfucking shit. Okay? Period. Go ahead. No, nah, just, you know, be yourself and put in that word. Yeah. Don't just be somebody over here pushing buttons. You know, actually know right. what you're doing and control that vibe. Right. You know what I mean? Actually vibe with the crowd. Don't just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like you're very passionate about that. That's one thing I feel like when, especially DJs, 
you gotta have passion with it because it's it's music. Just like an artist is passionate about making their music, you gotta be passionate with playing your motherfucking shit. Cause what you are artist and you passionate, you sensitive about your shit. Yeah. And when you love it, you do it for free. You know, I started DJing for free, and it took me like a year and a half before I started getting paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I refuse to just do anything. Like I wouldn't go DJ in a backyard barbecue. Like I wouldn't take. The 16-year-old party, my mom was celebrities in South Beach, Miami vibe. So I literally waited my time, right. you know, and to squeeze in, I had a DJ for free. Because like I said, it's so competitive, you know, and I put in that work. But when you love what you're doing, it ain't really work. Right. You know? For real. Okay, so last question. Well, actually, it's two. Where do you see yourself in five years, and where do you see yourself in ten years? <laughs> Within five, uh, I should have my own venue, okay. House of Showtime in Palm Beach County, so look out for that. Okay. Within 10 years, I don't know, I want to just be somewhere on a beach somewhere, not worried about nothing. Right, you right, know? right. Probably okay. Dubai, Ooh. Fiji, something like that. Yay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So do you have any upcoming events that we should know about? Yeah, I'm actually opening up for Ludacris um, this Saturday. Uh, I can't remember the name of the fest, but if you look for it, you'll find it. Yeah. They just called me this morning, so. Okay. You know, Congratulations that to that Thank as you. well. Keep excelling in Appreciate life, it. elevating, doing your thing. And where can we find you on social media? Tap in. Uh, my Instagram party with Showtime. Uh, no H. No H. Yeah. Well, with the, with no H and with it's right. with because he's from the street. That's okay. right. We keep it real. Period. Simple. <laughs> Uh, just follow me on the gram that's my main source of uh communication so if you need me hit me up and come an artist you know hit me dm if you got some fire i'll check it out i ain't one of them djs you know you can even come to exchange miami holla at me at the dj booth you know i speak so it is what it is hey all right well thank y'all so much for tuning in and showtime thank you so much for having me no i thank appreciate you so you. much for the opportunity for this like next five years we're gonna be millionaires okay maybe sooner than that right i'm gonna pull up in dubai we're gonna be like what pull up to my mansion so we're gonna do the interview on a yacht next time right Ooh. and that's what? no cap manifested stay tuned what? stay tuned hey Go ahead, follow Let's Be Real, L-E-T-Z-B-E-R-E-A-L, the podcast on Instagram. And make sure you follow me, your girl, Classic Coco, K-L-A-S-S-I-C-K-O-K-O, on Instagram, YouTube, all that. Tap in next time. See you.